activation were lower and slower than than expected and this is at least as expected by our partner in this collaboration so this prompted some vigorous discussion behind the scenes about what is the best strategy moving forward and so about 2 weeks ago as we got about 3 weeks of results in a course correction was collectively decided upon and what this means is that today we're we're not going to be launching an invitation system as we had anticipated and instead we are going to start the campaign with the actual app for the network marketplace um even if that starting with the alpha version of the app the group that we are working on this project with feels this is going to be more effective so i want to you know on today's call we're going to go through the the results so i'll give you the up to date results of how many people activated in our community um we're going to go over the situation and i'll give you you know an overview of that so you have a better understanding of the dynamics and i'm going to describe this this alliance led strategy shift again we are working with partners on this and it is they who made this call um and as i said it's it happened about 2 weeks ago um and you may ask well so why have we waited until now to talk about this well it was important to see how our organic results ended up so that that was also something that this has been closely monitored and um they they didn't want to disturb that process finally we will talk about how we move forward as a community and we'll hopefully have some time for some q and a at the very end so how many members activated we'll, we'll do this by time um so in the first 3 days 302 members of the community said that they would support the campaign so it was a solid showing from the beginning within 7 days it was at 406 members by the first 14 days it was 509 the first 28 days at 587 members and then as of today there's 779 members who have activated they they signed the pledge so to speak and that represents 22% of our current telegram channel members so let me give you a little background into this situation to frame this let, let's talk about you know what what are we coming to the table with in this collaboration so what what are the strengths of our community and why is this group you know listening to us and and dealing with us but we've got thousands of members many of those are inactive but there are now hundreds that are showing that they're active and ready to ready to take action our community has a basic understanding of blockchain and cryptocurrencies they also have referral marketing understanding and experience we have a dao infrastructure that has been built on the algorand network and that is our mvault um platform and I'll, i'll update on that uh but that is seen as very attractive by our partner 
And this may come as a surprise, but the fact that our community has the ability, has this unique physical product uh, in Javaka that it has full control over um, is important to this group um, because they have a lot of digital uh, product line experience and connections, et cetera. Uh, but they obviously physical products, they really want to uh, focus on and they want to have a smaller segment of products that there would be control over those to test the systems and 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 uh, begin that that whole offering of physical products. So these are very solid strengths that, and we we also have a lot of strategic value in their eyes uh, related to our knowledge of of these areas. What does this group that I spoke about in our our last uh, Zoom call, what are they bringing to the table? Well, I described to you that this is a 50-person world-class development group. They have a wide range of applicable development experience, meaning that that is in uh, e-commerce, that is in logistics, um, as well as artificial intelligence, they have had some very high level clients. And this is a project that they are pursuing as their own, you know, pursuit. Uh, th this is not, uh, they, they have taken on many clients in the past, but this is kind of a special project that uh, they want to move forward. And they have, and they have ownership of a very strong brand for this project. Um, and that is what's led to the carefulness in revealing the brand. And because they, it's, it's a multi-million dollar brand that they don't, they just want to be very careful about. And it is understandable, but it also leads to issues. And we'll talk about those. Uh, they have a strong e-commerce angle to jumpstart this project with, and uh, that is a factor in this that we will also discuss a bit more. And then they have significant resources to launch and support the project. So they're bringing a lot to the table and you know they have a lot of sway over this situation. Important to understand. So, a bit about the situation dynamics. In addition to this marketplace development group, there are two other development teams, smaller teams that have been working on related projects. There is a back end team that has been working on the DAO governance system, and there is a front end team that has been working on the invitation system and the new Mvault platform. And again, these are smaller teams. Well, the back end team is from Western Europe. The front end team is from Eastern Europe. Um, they are smaller teams in comparison. Um, you know, like 20 to around 20, I think both of these other teams, 20 people. Um, and not, you know, they're contracting for this work. Um, very important is, as I'd mentioned, the member activations ended up lower and came in slower than was expected based on what this, this marketplace development group was looking for. Um, they knew, I was very upfront with them about where we are, there was, you know, complete uh, honesty and the disclosures, they, they know our history. They, they know that the majority of the community is inactive, but it is very significant and it's, and they, they like the possibility of waking up our community 
um, and they know that it has tremendous um, promotional strength. Uh, they also know that our Telegram channel, for instance, is down to 3,500 people. Um, that their expectation, though, was you know maybe half. They, they kind of were looking for you know, 40% to 60%, you know, on the upside, they thought it could go above 2000. Um, they thought it at least would be half, um, you know, or, or a little lo less than half would, would have been okay. When that didn't happen, it prompted a lot of discussion because I told you there's sensitivity from this group um, around, you know, things in general. So, they requested a revision based on a revision to our strategy based on what was coming in. Um, and so they thought given this smaller charter group that would start things, their recommendation was to forego the invitation system and start instead with the actual app, um, the Marketplace Alpha app, which there's a lot of, you know, it, it made some sense uh, in that the invitation system was not going to give that much information. And they thought if there was a couple thousand people, you know, starting with that system very actively, um, then there was some possibilities with that kind of a beginning. But they thought with a smaller group, it would be much better, more effective to have the actual app so that there's much more um, evidence and, and it's, it, the value proposition is much clearer as this. And the invitation system would still be working within the, the alpha app, uh, but you would have much more substance. So that, that was their read on the situation and you know that they, they have a lot of the control in this situation so as we went to implement this um this as i say a couple of weeks ago our front end team was informed of this shift and immediately discontinued their development work the marketplace development group stepped up and offered to take over the MVault development and uh, to integrate MVault into the Marketplace app. The positive status at the moment is that the Marketplace uh, development group has, con has connected with the backend team uh, who has completed their work on our DAO governance system. Um, and now they're going to be providing all the front end for that through MVault and integrating that into the Marketplace app. That's on the positive side. Open status, there's two important points. One is that the front end team, they weren't very happy with this decision. Um, and so, obviously, you know, it meant that things changed for their contract. Um, so they have yet to transition their existing work over to the Marketplace Development Group. Um, so that's a negotiation and process. And as of right now, there's, we do not have a final arrangement with the Marketplace Development Group um, as there's, there's still pending um, discussions going on, and I'll talk a little bit more about this. So this is the confronting reality. Um, and I want everyone to understand that, again, there is, we, we are not in control <clears throat> of this particular project. We are bringing a lot of attractive things to the collaboration, and we have very strong influence on this project, um, but they are bringing, this development team is bringing more to the table and really are, um, it's a larger team, they're, you know, they're in control. Um, so 
Uh, we have to face the reality that, you know, there is no guarantee an agreement can be reached with this group. I really believe that we can get to a place of agreement, but it's important to point out that they, and this kind of goes back to just, I think others could identify with this. So there is a portion of this development group that is not as into the, the, the network element, the decentralized marketing element. Um, while there's a very strong proponent, a group of proponents in this group behind that, there is also a more conservative side that's much more kind of wants to approach things more centralized. And, you know, they have a lot of, they've got a lot of money uh, that's kind of locked up in the branding um, that they have, um, this .com that they have and the associated branding. And they, there's a group that believes that having this very decentralized marketing approach may diminish this, the thrust of, of this whole network marketplace. Um, you know, I, I've been really going hard on that. I think it's, it's so vitally important that, that they preserve this angle. Um, so, you know, I am really, really pushing that. And as I say, there is strong uh, support for that. But this is a very vibrant development group, and there's a lot of discussion. And, you know, it is, it's their pet project. And, um, you know, so it, it's kind of, it has not been settled yet. And so I need everyone to be aware of that, um, that uh, they may choose to go and start without this piece. Um, rather than starting, rather than using this as the starting point. So, you know, again, there's no guarantee, but I'm pushing very hard on this. Another reality that we need to understand as a community is the DAO governance system that we have the back end of that completed, and now we just need the front end of it. But for this really to have any meaning, it's going to need context. And it needs the context of at least one very solid active project. And anyone who doesn't understand that, who thinks that, hey, we can just start up the governance system, you know, we're going to need a focal point for all of the the why of why people would even be dealing with the, the governance system, we need that focal point. And we have two projects that would be appropriate as this DAO focal point. One is this network marketplace. And again, it is not in our full control. Um, it is actually very much, it's not in our control. I need to be very upfront about that. Um, this group holds many more cards on this particular project, and therefore, you know, we are a great collaborator, but we're not the determining factor. Um, we also have a global food security platform. We, we can use the next, um, you know, our next Zoom to go into that, but that is dealing with a entirely different group of uh, kind of a, a different alliance. Um, there's a different group of technology providers. There's a foundation involved in that. It's a, it's a whole different thing. One of these needs to happen for our DAO governance system to, to launch properly. Both of these projects are alliance-led. They require the assistance of partners. In the network marketplace, it's this marketplace development group. 
And in the global food security platform, it is a foundation that are really the ones who hold the power. But again, in both of these, we are a prime collaborator. So how do we move forward? All of you listening to this are called upon to stay engaged and remain flexible. A big part of that is remaining responsible as everybody on this call and everyone who's stepped up has shown that they are believers in what we're doing. They're taking responsibility. They know that for us to complete this journey and build the, the kind of outcome that we've always wanted, we need people to take action. And you have been those people. And that is an amazing thing. And, you know, you are just encouraged to remain firmly in that position of taking responsibility for our community, for its results. In today's world, it, there's so much discussion about people wanting rights, they want their rights to things, but they never are talking about the responsibilities that, that prop those rights up, that give those rights meaning. And that's what this group has done. And I'm just really encouraging all of you to remain in that responsible posture. I'm also asking you to remain patient. We are, you know, we're very close in this. Um, you know, we've been at this a very long time um, and we're, we're not giving up. And I encourage every one of you to not give up as well. And then I also encourage you to remain ready because this is going to be happening. Something is going to be happening and I'll get into what, you know, what is our current, the current proposal that's on the, on the table right now um, to give you some idea of, of the chronology, of potential chronology. Um, but to, just to be, you know, just to maintain doing exactly what you're doing, you're, you're staying connected and, you know, remaining ready to take action. So the, the current proposal um, that's out there now um, would have things launching with an alpha version of the marketplace, uh, of the network marketplace. And so what they're asking for is, is a sub-segment. Um, and they, they had talked about the uh, 300, you know, person, seeing and then that was totally triggered by the results of our community where they said okay there's 302 people came out of the gate basically within the first three days and said we're ready to roll and they're they're feeling like we you know that's a group we can work with to you know get them acclimated with the alpha app and then give them a limited number. And so there's gonna be, you know, they're planning for two types of invitation links. One type that we would start with is just a one-time use link. And so there'd be five of those. There would eventually be normal links that you could use multiple times. But um, their idea is to start on a more controlled basis. Then, there would be the beta launch. And that would be members of the community being loaded into the system in stages, receiving the beta app. And so the stage one would be the remaining activated members. So of that 779, um, there would be, you know, approximately what, 500 or so um, that would be in that group of stage one. Stage two would be uh, Javaka Synergy members, members that are like actively working with the, the physical product line um, would be coming in at stage two. 
there'd be an opportunity for remaining Telegram channel members that have not raised their hand. <clears throat> this is uh, approximately 80% of our active Telegram channel members. Um, we would give them the opportunity to join at that stage. And then the final stage on the beta would be mVault subsegments um, by different asset levels. Following the beta launch, there would be a global launch, and that's when the network marketplace system would be open to the public, and there is a, an in-person event planned for that in Thailand. And as for timing, this would, you know, would definitely be second half of this year. Um, they're talking of the alpha starting in August, the beta starting in September, and the global launch in November under this scenario. I also want to make a point about the mVault integration. Um, so th there's, you know, the, the current compose proposal would have mVault serving as this network marketplace's Web3 hub. Um, so some of the mVault functionality would be integrated directly into the network marketplace app. The rest of it would be integrated or would be accessible through mVault.com. And that's where all the dApps would be. Um, and, you know, we're, we're constructing and discussing a collaboration where um, they would be doing, this development group would be doing the build out of mVault.com. Now, with this happening, um, and under this current proposal, there would be a gradual rollout of DAO access. Um, and, you know, the idea is that um, it's likely that members with the earliest access to the network marketplace app would also have the earliest access to the DAO contracts. And, you know, since there's a beta process is needed to ensure the smooth functioning of the DAOs, then ideally we would run that beta alongside the beta release of the Network Marketplace app. So this is something that it's important um, for people to understand. I think uh, there's a, a lot of people perhaps that are under the impression and truthfully, we were, you know, considering like the, the plan was to just open that up. You know, there, there, it, there would be a beta of sorts, but it was kind of the idea was that any of our community would be in the beta. But as we've kind of developed this collaboration, it's become clear that the way we would do this would kind of go along with the same approach that they're taking with the app. And so it, it would end up having it so that those who are active in this project are gonna get the initial access to the DAO and, and, and the functionality of those contracts. So I don't think that that has been clear uh, in the past, and so you know, it's it's not finalized um, again, but it does look like that is the logical way that this would happen, um, and it does underscore the need again for taking responsible action, and for those who are doing that, who are taking responsible action, they will be beneficiaries of earlier access. And, um, you know, I, I do think it's, it's a shame that we didn't have more of our community um, kind of take that simple action um, of just agreeing to support in, the, in a minimal way. 
um, you know, it wasn't asking for a lot. And yet, you know, we've kind of hit the, uh, you know, the 80-20 rule plays out once again. Um, and so we have 20% of our remaining community that is really kind of loyal and active. And that's ultimately going to be, you know, the 20% that gains the initial access to the, the governance system.